I never start working on a piece based on a previously prepared plan. Each time I started to work on a well-developed idea, it never turned out well. The working process ended during the time of reflection. I don't set myself any personal restrictions. Nonetheless, I experience more freedom before a canvas. An artist is free. We might even place an equal sign between the artist and freedom. Periods come and go. This happens in a natural way. For example, I know that I want to make a pink painting and produce four such pieces. But I won't be able to paint a fifth one due to the simple reason that inspiration has already left me. This is my internal state. I have no awareness of what's happening around me while I'm painting. It resembles a state of agony. I'm surrounded by emptiness. It's a very good feeling. Do you know how good it feels? The main thing for an artist is his work. One can even say that this is the crucial idea of being an artist. Sometimes I think I would have been nobody without any work in my life. Who would I be? Nobody. Do you think I'm happy when I finish a work? Being part of the process means everything to me. I have a family, a wife and kids. I go to concerts and exhibitions. And the creative process exists along with all those things. Childhood. It's very pleasant to recall this period. Where do these works come from? What do I remember? I remember the workshop. My father was a painter, a representative of the 1950s generation. Sadly, he did not follow an artistic path, and I was only able to inherit a couple of his works. I remember the smell of oil paints, which has almost been eradicated by new technologies and can only be found in random places. I spent most of my childhood in a Basha region, in the beautiful village of Atseri, where I painted a lot. How I began drawing is a very interesting story. Because it wasn't part of my plan at all. It was in the eighth grade when my mother checked my grades, turned to my father, and said ironically, he has no chance of becoming anything but a painter. This was her verdict. In 1967, I enrolled at Nikolaze Art School. There I began a fantastic period of professional studies. First of all, I remember that I started to become friends with painters. We had amazing instructors. I was in my youth and preparing for the academy. A really serious test. This work was produced in 1983. It was my bold decision, which also determined the scale of painting. In the 1980s, it was already possible to get hold of materials. It was hard to find yellow and red paints. Despite being able to abandon the state and become irreal, one remains connected to this part of life. Strangely enough, a person manages to persevere only selected elements of memories. This exhibition presents my most recent works and offers a way to see yourself. I basically transferred my workshop over to this beautiful space. The show has a strange title, 3-2, but the explanation is quite simple. These are works that have been produced over the last three to two years. I love the paintings that unite several gradations of black. They may be produced with pencil, acrylic, or paint and distributed on the canvas by hand. This adds richness to the surface. As a child, I used to paint these kinds of airplanes in my school notebooks. Of course, they were decorated with a star. Here it seemed out of place, so I shifted it to another location. These are details from the parades organized during my childhood. It is inconceivable 
to present my paintings without showing my graphic works with them, because they contain elements that are later manifested on the canvases. It is a process of embarking on a quest. At the same time, the smaller scale graphic works can accommodate many elements such as a line, a shape, thickness, anything. It is a process of preparation. I'm displaying my book for the first time in Atinati Gallery. I have produced several of them, but I believe this one is really interesting because of the slightly naive, childish paintings, the focus on lines and elements of fine art. An old sketchbook is an old sketchbook. It has a history of its own, and I tried to delve in it. Gia Gugushvili is one of the most distinguished and unique representatives of contemporary Georgian art. He belongs to the so-called generation of the 1980s. This group of artists was very important for the contemporary Georgian art, as they managed to bring about significant changes. In his works, the colors form primary, impressive impulses. These are paintings that can be contemplated for prolonged periods and still please the eye. One might say that these are meditative abstractions. Even when the works include small figures or figurative shapes, these serve as certain hints that don't offer explanations of a specific content, but bear symbolic meaning. Nevertheless, the artist tries to maintain the atmosphere of a secret. He does not reveal his story to its full extent, but offers the viewers the chance to reflect, associate, and meditate or just simply enjoy. The surfaces are covered with scratches, which add to the expressive character of the works. The baseline is created through a seemingly childish drawing, naive art, a mark that might resemble graffiti found on a wall. My work at the Academy of Arts began very interestingly, as I was invited here by the team. This was unexpected and appealing. I thought it would take a lot of time, since I'm a painter and need a significant amount of time to work. However, I was proven wrong. The new generation has a completely new approach to creative thinking. They are not interested in a classical type of study process. My relationship with the students turned out to be quite harmonious. As such, I don't feel that I'm wasting time at the academy. On the contrary, I spend more time here involved in the creative process. I mean the time spent with the students. When I go to my workshop afterwards, the process continues there too. The academy doesn't present any obstacles, but is a place where you are fully involved in the creative process. In 1971, the building became a renovation site. I was a first-year student when the renovation works were begun. I partook in the restoration of this ceiling and this particular section. Fifty years later, I completed the restoration work of this wonderful palace in the position of rector. This happened exactly 50 years later. I like the Asian and Oriental elements. I'd like to show you this little book, which is a reflection on the subject. 
I created it myself, and it includes oil paintings with thick insertions. The oriental motif of Shehrazade refers to this location. The paintings represent subconscious echoes of these halls. We find ourselves in the Silk Road, and the book also refers to this fact. The artist belongs to art, and art belongs to the artist. This is the only way I see it. Art belongs to people. Why should it belong to people? This happens in a natural way. It is your mission. If you are not honest, you're a missionless person. We invented a new word, missionless. Yes, that's what I think.